Good afternoon and welcome back to Girded with Truth. Thank you so much for joining us today as we continue our series, Distraction Equals Destruction. Today we're saying that the sickness is a distraction. Mark chapter 5 verses 21 to 24 says, And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. So I'm saying to you today, Point number one, do not allow anyone or anything to stop your breakthrough. God is waiting just to take up your case, just to show up in your situation, just to perform a miracle. For example, word got out that Jesus was coming and I'm sure the word around was that Jesus works miracles signs and wonders and there was many people there gathered just to see jesus but jairus did not let that or his power and influence stop him from getting a miracle for his daughter he was not too high or too mighty or too arrogant to receive healing for his daughter from Jesus. He did not allow anything to stop breakthrough for his child. He came to Jesus and said, come and heal my daughter. He came before Jesus, he cried out, and he invited Jesus to change his situation. An entire crowd of people was around Jesus calling out to him. There was no shortage of people crying out to Jesus, but yet still in the crowd, he heard Jairus and he was headed towards his home to heal his daughter. Don't ever think that there's so much people calling on God that he's not willing to hear you or he is not waiting to come and answer your prayer. Jesus is just waiting for you to cry out to him to show up to send his angels, to dispatch heaven to fight for you. And do not let anyone stop you from connecting to Jesus. Mark chapter five verses 25 to 27 says, And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse, when she had heard of Jesus, came in and pressed behind and touched his garment. So my second point is never give up hope. This woman was sick for 12 years. She wasn't just regular sick. She was ailing. She was on her last. Physicians couldn't help her. Doctors, people who had studied for years and years, people who had studied sicknesses, diseases, all these things, they were not able to help her, but still she had hope. And when it says that this woman had an issue of blood, it didn't just mean that she had a prolonged period or anything like that. What it really meant is that she was bleeding as if a flow was coming out of her. Like how a river runs is how she was bleeding. So she was bleeding nonstop. She was bleeding continuously. She could have accepted defeat and just waited to die. But no, she decided she would take her last breath, her last stretch, her last and place it in the hands of Jesus. She decided instead of being hopeless and dying here, I would press in and I would grab onto Jesus and receive my deliverance. And it is this hope that became the catalyst that would enact her faith and eventually her healing. Verse 28 says, For she said, If I may touch his clothes, I will be made whole. 
Point number three is move beyond mustard seed faith. A lot of times we say, okay, if we just have faith like a mustard seed, but I'm challenging you today. We all should have faith like a mustard seed. And if you are holding on to that last glimmer of hope, that last seed of faith, nothing is wrong with that. But I'm also challenging you to have greater faith. Greater faith to enact greater works from God. Greater miracles from God because he says greater will we do. This woman didn't say, if I could just touch Jesus, I will be healed. In fact, she said, if I would hold onto his clothes, she couldn't reach to Jesus. But she said, if I could touch the thing that's touching Jesus, I will be made whole. She didn't cry out just for healing. She cried out for wholeness. Yes, the difference between healing and wholeness is this. Healing touches your body, but wholeness touches your spirit and your soul. Wherever you are lacking in your mind, your spirit, your soul, your body, when you receive wholeness, everything lines up. There is no lack. There is no insufficiency in any part of you when you receive wholeness. She didn't just want healing from that one issue or healing from that, for that one moment. She wanted wholeness throughout her life. She did not want to fight with this issue ever again. So she connected with not just mustard seed faith, but greater faith. She stretched her faith that said, okay, I don't even need to touch Jesus, but I need to touch what's touching him. And that is the length she went to, to believe God. So she defied the normal mustard seed faith. She challenged her own faith and it is this faith that brought about her healing. It didn't just bring about her healing, but it brought about her wholeness. She wanted wholeness, she reached out for it and she received it. Mark chapter 5 verses 29 to 32 says, and straightway the fountain of her body was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that Bertie who had gone out of him turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see who that had done this thing. And point number four is everybody may not see you, but God sees you. Immediately, Jesus knew that virtue went out of him. And instead of her searching for Jesus, it became where Jesus was searching for her. So sometimes it's not where you touch or what you touch. It's how you touch. She held on to Jesus with that faith and that hope and immediately she received her healing. So it's not what she touched alone or where she touched alone, but it's how she touched Jesus. She connected with Jesus. She grabbed hold of him in hope and with faith. And that is what caused the divine exchange in that moment where she was made whole. She was grasping at the last straw she had. She didn't know what else to do. But when you don't know what else to do, God knows exactly what you need. So in the midst of Jesus heading to the Jairus' house, this woman was made whole. The disciples thought Jesus was asking a crazy question because there was a crowd all around. But do you know, even in the midst of a crowd, God knows exactly who you are? He is the kind of God that would leave the 99 just for the one. He will come after you. The book of Psalms says, even if you make your bed in hell, he is there because his presence is everywhere. He is omnipresent. And I'm not saying that we should make our bed in hell, but I'm saying wherever you are, you are never too far or never too low for God to reach you. He's just waiting to stretch out his hand to connect to you. And the last point I want to make is tell the truth and receive wholeness from God. Verses 33 to 34 says, the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, 
came and fell down before him and told all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy fate had made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. So when Jesus and this woman came face to face, she could have pretended it wasn't her. She had two options in that moment, either be honest or lie. Because she did not know what Jesus was going to do. He was the almighty powerful God. He could have done her anything. But she did not choose to go back into fear. But instead, she decided to continue in faith. And she was honest. She decided to throw herself at his feet, worship him, and she decided to speak the truth. And it is in that moment that Jesus came through when he realized she was honest, she had faith, and she put her hope in him. And it is this combination that came together to bring about her wholeness because she believed in God. She believed that Jesus could make her whole. And it is in that moment she moved from just being healed to being made whole. Because the only person that can make you whole is God. A surgery can give you your healing. A surgery could improve your physical body. But it is only Jesus that is able to make you whole in your spirit, your soul and your body so i'm saying today cry out to jesus and receive your wholeness the bible says without faith it is impossible to please god so i'm telling you today grab hold of your faith speak the truth and allow god to make you whole wholeness comes from god and yes there's problems that arise in your life sickness diseases all manner of things but i'm telling you today that this sickness is a distraction and don't let this distraction become your destruction. Instead, grab hold of God, have faith in him continually, and continue in his word, and he will deliver you. Continue in the faith that God has made you strong in. Until we meet again, have a wonderful afternoon. Bye.